Sorry about that. We got a little bit of, there we go. We got the mic back. Uh, we'll check in. We'll see, um, as we were saying, this is the last week of the fall finale. We'll see if uh, we can cast some of the uh, two-day tournament next weekend. Malganis, now legal. Uh, I'm not sure anybody's going to let him through. Uh, and again, these are best of three sets. So taking a look at our maps right now, we have Cursed Hollow, as well as Battle for the Paternity, banned out. And where are we headed? We're heading to Volskaya Foundry. Uh, this is the selection of the U of K. So the Burrows from CSM will have our first map selection. Just taking a quick peek here. Just, yep, everything looking good. Great. We'll be heading to draft. Toot sweet. Teams are declaring that they are ready. Again, should be a really good set. Um, I want that BO3. I want something nice, long, and bloody. Chat, what is happening? Papa Hollis is here. Papa Hollis and Dad of Time, uh, by the way, are on the starting roster for Hot's Dads. Uh, that uh, lineup is rounded out, uh, of course, by Smithel and uh, Ghost Dunk's dad, St. Basil. I hear that they're looking for a flex. So if you have a lot of kids uh, and you're looking to dive back into some video games, check it out. Starting things off with a cane band, we are on Volskaya Foundry. Uh, Kane, Alex, White Mane, Tyrande, all more than viable here. And we also get started with the Tyrande ban. Is the Shapey Boys perhaps targeting Joe? Janet taken away. Is Malganis going to make it through? It's, um, boy. Opinions on Malganis seem to be that his kit is overtuned. There are ways to counter him out. He won't make it through the first part of the draft, but... Just not enough experience, and I think everybody is really still waiting to see what the next set of nerfs are for him. Again, that base kit is just super powerful, even with the recent nerfs that he went through. Now let's see where the Burroughs want to take us. First pick over to the Colorado School of Mines. None shall flee my grass. It started with Maya. Maya had... 100% involvement rate at BlizzCon. I think maybe the one set that she wasn't involved with um, was, you know, the meme set, if you will. Might have dipped over the last couple of months in terms of usage as we moved into sort of like a double poke meta for a little while where the ranged heroes, a very uh, even tier, were prioritized by now Mayev right back in the meta. Anytime you're ready. Now we've got our StarCraft duo with Blaze as well as James Rayner. Rumors abound that Blaze is now main tank viable. We'll have to see where U of K goes. That might have been an insider hint uh, from one of my favorite Hots luminaries. I don't know if it's trickled down here into Tespa. Do your worst. Nice. So I'm going to get a picture with all of Gen.G. That's sweet. Let the a lot of people coming back from commence. BlizzCon. A lot of cool stuff going on there. Hope everybody had a really good time out there in Anaheim. Yorel and White Mane are picked up for Colorado Mines. And since we're on a three-minute delay, haha, I can speculate about the draft without anybody sniping me. Um, Yorel and White Mane is an opener, if you will, for... Uh, thank you, Dad, of time for the bits. Uh, Yorel and White Mane is an opener for the tankless comps. There's a Mephisto ban. White Mane and Yorel working in the armor stacking will oftentimes make... A hero, uh, likely in this case to be Zul, capable of performing those main tank duties. So I don't know if we're going to see any of those shenanigans. But again, White Man Yorel is an incredibly strong duo in this meta. Their ability to team fight, survive, and you know, then counter engage is uh, borderline unparalleled. There is a mouth ban. A little bit of a healer choke. This almost seems like with the mouth ban that this may be a little bit of an Alex Straza bait. We'll see where Kentucky wishes to go. All of the tanks are up and available. Johanna Diablo. Even Garage. And as usual, Diablo cuts off Hanzo in the quote. Big Red, as well as the Archer, are picked up by Kentucky. Now we come to it. 
We get a little main tank Zool action. The Burrows need their range carry. Oh, they take the Johanna instead. And we do get Tychus. It's about time. I've been waiting to see more Tychus. Diablo has been at the top of the meta for so long that I feel like it has taken teams, a, a majority of teams, too long to focus back in on Tychus. With Johanna providing the wave clear, Tychus is free to uh, rat a tat tat on the big red guy. And we do get the Alex. So Alex will round off our draft and our composition. I mean, listen, these are two great drafts. Two very good teams that have been playing together for a number of months before the Tespa preseason. One thing to keep an eye on here is that time on the Mayev is going to have to do some work. With Hanzo and Reiner having such exceptional range, the focus now may become putting pressure onto Joe on that Diablo. Once again, Tespa week seven. This is the first uh, map of a potential of a best of three. Again, we're hoping to get three games in. On the left, Colorado School of Mines. On the right, the University of Kentucky. Once again, shout out to chat. Shout out to Dev Time, as always. Uh, oh, boy. There are a lot of choices that you can also make here in terms of heroics. I'm very interested to see if this is containment disc or if this is uh, still going to be Warden's Cage. Alex Straza has two heroics as well. Also have to keep an eye on Blaze to get some combustion shenanigans. All right. Over on the side. Well, the Blasting Burrows from Colorado School of Mines. Michaelin will be playing the Arel. Joe on the White Main. Tiddly on the Johanna Time on the Maya. And Justice will be playing the Good Tychus. On the other side, for the University of Kentucky, a square and four triangles. Uh, starting off with our Roger Lattle friend there. Bruce Banner is going to be playing the Alex Straza. Mortician on the Hanzo. Joe on the Diablo. Dark Shadow on the Raider. And I Make Memes will be playing the Blaze. Neural Stim Pack, by the way, for the Blaze Arena. Everything else looking fairly standard. We see Nice's momentum, a little W build, uh, as well for Joe on that white main. So we're going to an aggressive positioning here from Michaelin. The early game advantage, I would have to say, actually does belong to Mines. And the reasoning is because Diablo needs to get stacked up. Alex Rose is just a, a, a better uh, point control hero than she is during the lane phase. Especially in a map like Volskaya. We'll take a peek down on the bottom lane with Michael and it means going at it. You can already see there the pressure that's coming up. It's a two-man tether time. Should be okay. Standing on the point. Joe actually goes down. The reset's coming through for Maya. Mortician nearly gone. He needs to be careful. One grenade from Tychus could wipe him out. First blood. Going over to the mules. This being Volskaya, usually the first kill will bring about an immediate aggressive rotation, if not uh, a set of them. And it looks like mines are going to get started with Diablo respawning and with the rest of Kentucky still up uh, in the top lane trying to get some clear. The first fortification turret is snapped up. Tiddly he on that Johanna has so much wave flare in the early game that Johanna should be very rare to threat. We see Tychus as well as White Mane there in the bottom lane. That is going to be two early fortification turrets. Kentucky a little bit late to this. They actually do have the chance to interrupt. Johanna as well as Maya are going to be late. We'll see if Joe can get in there. It's going to be interesting. There's going to be collapse on the backside from Maya as well as Johanna. They need to find a kill very quickly. Diablo there standing on the point. Both teams looking to contest. Here comes Maya. Joe low again. The Umbral Vine finishes him off. Rainer trying to get out. And Michaelin with the Goomba stomp. Three kills. On over to the Burrows. Getting things started in a hurry. That invade was a little late, but I do like the play from Kentucky. I think they made the right move. It might have been about 15 seconds too late. The only other thing you can do in that situation is try to provide an anchor and, and disrupt the rotation from Johanna and Maya. It's still hard because Maya uh, is one blinky warden. 
And now a massive advantage on the point. It's not just a level and a half. It is a three item lead. Two fortification turrets as well as one by a uh, committer. And the burrows, they really know that they have time. Wink, wink. On the camp. But they also do have enough time where they can choose the point at which they use the items on this uh, point, and then at that point, I expect Kentucky to just back off. For UK, this may be a situation where, considering how many items they are down, and they're about to be down level 7, this may be uh, a spot where they look to soak, accept the early objective loss, and try to build towards the comeback. What else is going on? We're going to flip over here real quick. I just want to peek at one thing here. Do we have... The hero share extension, it should be going. I'll have to take a peek at that later. Shout out to the hero share bot, as well as the hero share extension for helping us out here and working with the heroes casters for hire. I make memes in the bottom lane. Bit of pressure. Blaze is quite fine. There in the top lane, we see Joe and company anchoring, and this is a very good response. They're going to get a ton of chip damage. Should be most of the wall. Time is the first person up here. Finds Joe. There's a blink from Maya. One tether onto Hanzo. We'll be looking for a wall to jump over. The vault and the leap from Hanzo. 90% has been picked up. Blaze is going to go ahead and get a little bit of channel in here. No items used yet. Michael and making the hop skip it a jump will flash our talent. Again, everything looking fairly standard. Taking a peek at the white main seven. We do have intercession. So we do get the cleanse for white main. Joe getting pushed off. There's one fortification here. It looks like the burrows are going to wind up stacking these. They've got the end of the channel coming through here. Joe in a bit of trouble. Does slam tank his up against the wall. And now we can keep an eye on Maya in the reset. She gets the pull on the backside. Diablo under pressure yet again. I make memes the last person in there. Kentucky goes down one member. Blaze with the jet propulsion in. And he does not get back out. University of Kentucky will have to concede the first objective Maya causing all kinds of anarchy in the University of UK wink wink shout out if you get that reference mid wall will go down first with the early game kills numbering 5 to 0 there is a strong opportunity for the burrows here to pick up level 10 off of the objective the wall Probably in the well gets them there with a the passive soak, and we do. Let's take a peek at the mid lane, see a little bit more passive soak going on as well. It's Justice as the Tychus making his way down there. Well should do it. One more wave. In the middle of the pack there. That's White Man and Johanna going up against four. White Man now the target. Diablo looking for the suplex. Does not pick it up, and now Maev looking to wreak a little bit more havoc. Alex is in big trouble. And Tychus comes through. Justice with a good flank there. Mortician diving out as Hanzo. Looks like Joe maybe just missed the suplex range on White Mane. And that might have turned uh, in the beginning of that fight. Mines. Keeps on rolling. Here's the fortification turret invade. Picking up more items for the next objective phase. This will be a top Triglov protector. <laughs> Shout out to chat. Shout out to Papa Tom. So let's take a peek. Let's see, what do we got for turrets? What's going on here? Uh, so Justice and Michael will have one between them. Tiddly he on the Johanna is holding one. Joe now starting up the biotic emitter. The support camp time is nearby. Tens are a half level away for the University of Kentucky, excuse me. They'll have a, a short window to make a play, 10 into 12. Let's see if they sniff out this emitter. Time will go ahead and grab that one on the Mayev. Mayev under pressure here. They got a quick little camera change. Michael and looking for the jump. There it is. Diablo with a flip. See if Michael Lynn wants to go ahead and burn an ardent defender here. He will. He's going to need a jump. In fact, he's looking for a little bit of a bailout. Joe gets there. Tiddly he now has arrived. Dragon Queen is popped by Blue Spanner, and time is going in. There's the double chain, and Hanzo looks like he's next. The Goomba Stomp confirms the first kill 
Here's a Hyperion. Alex trying to keep everybody alive, and now we've got a bunker and on the inside of a cage. Diablo goes down. Blaze wait and see if he can find his way out of there. Maya trying to keep this reset chain going. Blaze gets pulled back. Maya will convert yet another kill. Three more on the board for mine. Nearly got that one done. Kentucky was very close to picking off Yorel. And I think that they assumed that Michael was going to look for the gate there. After the Ardent Defender went through, he made a good move towards his buddies, and there was Tiddly to back up the goat. 13 10, 9 0 lead. Burrow's looking strong in game number one with this top objective. The shapes will look to get a little bit more chip damage on bottom, making a good macro response. Uh, they will be able to potentially set themselves up for the next objective phase. But this one looks largely done and dusted. Joe having a nice little seat up in the top lane. Lane has been pushed in by Tittles on the Joe. Speaking of Joe, looking to get the anchor. Time coming in for the invade. Diablo with a little bang. Maya has already used Warden's, excuse me, Vault. Now gets the pull. Dark Shadow in trouble. Cleansing Flame comes out. Rainer is the target right now, and we get Justice moving in with the Odin. A huge jet propulsion. Michaelman does not have Ardent Defender, and Urel goes down. Tiddly, he's standing on the point. Iron Skin has been used. Bunker will sit on this as well. Hyperion came out. We also had a Biotic Emitter used as well. And the first victory for the University of Kentucky. A lot of R buttons used. Hanzo still has arrow. Warden's Cage and Ardent Defender will be available over this point. 14, 12, 2 level lead. You're starting to see it close just a little bit. This was a 3 level lead before that invade play. Kentucky has all five members up and Joe knows it. Iron Skin has to be popped. Johanna gets put up against the wall. Without Dragon Queen, this will be difficult, but... The delay can help Kentucky here. They can get a little bit more passive soak. Go and try to get themselves closer to 13. They're about a half level away. This is going to take... Oh, I want to say five to six waves? Ten minutes in? Might be a little off on my scaling. I'm a little rusty. What can I say? Time goes in. Has the chains popped. Four resets. Five resets. Six. Seven. Boost Banner almost just waylaid there by Maya. Needs to move in, and Joe is in big trouble. Wing Buffet only hits one member. Diablo does go down. Joe backing everybody up. White Mane's got your heels, boys. Let's get this objective. Support camp will be picked up by the Burrows. So, 15 12. It'll be 13. Time goes ahead and picks up. Another biotic emitter. 16 will be unlocked with a combination of the objective and just this sort of free fort in the mid lane. Kentucky moves to defend. 84% up top. It is just Johanna. You see Tittle's anchoring on the corner there. Johanna will pick up the trig log. We'll start working her way around the map. White Mane hops in as the co-pilot. Trigger will look to clear out this camp, and I expect bottom will be the rotation, and here we go. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Robot a move. There goes Midfort. Midwell up next. And now the preparation begins for uh, Point C, the Clown Fiesta. Always the third objective phase here on the sky. I'm going to flash our talents up there as well. Nothing under the order, just taking a quick peek. Shout out to Rainer for taking Giddy up. It's a funny one. I guess he already Maya just leading the damage line there. Odin popped on Tychus, Justice, and crew. Looking to get that siege going. Nobody's going to give Tychus the time of day underneath this fort. So we'll go ahead and hop on into the Odin. You see Michael in with the off lane, so. Yorel will move the burrows on towards level 20. Depending on how much value they get here, it looks like it'll be 
most of the wall. In fact, all of the wall goes down. We're going to be close to level 18. In fact, that might have just gone pop. Joe gets suplexed. Hyperion is out. There is the Aegis from White Mane trying to keep everybody alive. At the same time, Diablo's starting to go down. He hops into the bunker, looks for a way out. Warden's Cage has been popped. Now Diablo's stuck on the inside. Blaze is there as well. They're looking to find their way out of this. Michael is on the backside looking to get a big hammer. There's a nice response from Hanzo on the arrow, but it is not going to be enough. Time getting the reset. There goes Dibbles. He's playing it aggressively. He is. There's a double pull. Alex goes down. Blaze gone as well. On the backside, Mortician one auto attack away. Good use of the natural agility, but it is just Dark Shadow on that Rainer left. Needs to be careful. One more kill is probably game. And the bros lay lace to bottom keep. They do slide up. They don't have a lot of the R button, but they are going to get started about 10 seconds before everybody is back. Tiddly, he steps up. One kill might do it. There is a searing lash. Root. Rainer does make it out, however. Michaelin steps up right to the heart. There's the Jet Propulsion. Our Defender is used and popped well and early. He gets about a quarter of his health back. Tiddly, he trying to get them disengaged there. We did see Blessed Shield popped out. Justice on the Odin. As the shields go down, keep an eye on time here. He might want to make a move. Here's the double umbral bind. Alex as well as Rainer in trouble. Maya put up against the wall. Good Jet Propulsion follow-up. The cleanse comes through. Aegis is off of cooldown, as is Bunker. Blaze has nowhere to go. Long way out. That big body is just enough. Still 94% on the core. Shields were broken, but the siege damage just wasn't there. After all of that, the bros claim our first keep of the game. And they set themselves up for a win condition over point C. They also will be looking at a very easy level 20 advantage. University of Kentucky trying to figure out how they can get back into this game. Team's making a little Merc roundup. Uh, the problem, uh, listen, in the early game, this... Certainly early game composition was just too much. Diablo kept getting targeted before he could get stacked. In fact, they can pull up the... There we go. Can pull up the deaths. Six targets on the Dibbles. A lot of that has to do with the Tychus pickup. And Justice has done a darn good job on... Nesser Finlay. Michaelin at the front. Keep an eye on the URL hammer. Hyperion has come out. There's plays with the Jet Propulsion. We do get Cleansing Flame on top of the Hyperion as well. Warren's Cage is there. We've got three members pulled in. You see Starly D just get popped out as well. There's a Lightning Breath, but it is not enough to keep Diablo alive. Alex is alive on the back side. Looking to get Dragon Queen. She does get it off with no stuns. I make memes trying to find a way out. Just a little bit of the self-heal. Jet Propulsion away. He's got a nice slow trail, but he has left. Alex Straza. And the Dragon goes down. One fortification turret used, but two more kills have been picked up. Level 20s are here for Colorado School of Mines. Seraphim for Urel. The unstoppable there. We get even more unstoppable with this hand level talent. Scarlet Crusade. What do we got on Maya? Shadow Strike. Slow, armor, a little bit of damage. Maya's level 20 is kind of neat. It's it's not a very hard power spike. But if you're running a comp like this, which is built to just burn down Diablo, it's going to add uh, even more efficacy to that objective. 16 is here for Kentucky. They'll be able to fight on the point. And this will certainly be the last team fight of the game if they lose, at least with the 16 talent here. Diablo does get his souls back. A little bit of a bonus. Joe there. Getting things started with a contest. Keep an eye on the conveyor belts. Keep an eye on the point C shenanigans. Tychus moves in. Minigun cooldown now has been used. Time gets a three-man humble fine. Watch out for the resets here. Number of members already low. Mortician has to back off. We get the arrow coming through on top of the Hyperion and the Cleansing Flame. All the R buttons have been popped. Michaelin is the target of the Lightning Breath. But Joe is just a little bit out of range. And the Triglov Protector was picked up on the backside. As Johanna and White Mane are moving back in. Mortician does dodge the Nintendo Power Glove. Otherwise, Hanzo was going to be next. It's going to be a difficult defense. Perhaps even more difficult without this Diablo. Oh, the power glove comes out yet again with the root. Diablo goes down. That's one member 
He has a hundred souls, so he will come back weakened but available. No R buttons for about 40 seconds, excuse me, 30 seconds with Hanzo there will be. The next one up, 17 minute trig love. We've got Yorel dropping uh, onto the core. Time receives the Scarlet Ages, getting some resets of the Warden's Cage claim. Rainer, his core is at 40%, 30, and soon to go down. Game number one belongs to Colorado School of Mines. The Blasting Burrows go up 1-0. get our score updated. Mine's up 1-0. So again, we talked a little bit about um, the early game versus sort of mid-game composition, if you will. A lot of that I had to go, uh, had to deal with how hard Diablo was targeted. Maiev and Tychus are early game heroes. Their damage is very good in the early game. Tychus, not just a good Diablo counter, but he's one of the better sort of base heroes, if you will. Johanna with a, a really excuse me, dominant performance in the rotations where her wave clear far exceeds early game Rainer and Hanzo before they start to pick up talents. And Whitemane pumping those heels out. 1-0 Mines. And Kentucky will have the choice of uh, map pick or first pick for game number two. I'm going to check one extra thing. I might not have the extension running. been playing around a little bit with a great tool put out there by the uh, Hero Share Live Boys. It's an overlay one. Should be up there. All right. We'll check in on that in a little while. Waiting for our maps to come through. Once again, this is a best of three set. In fact, let's head over to maps two. Get a little bit of an update here. That is game number one. Let's get rid of that update. Ah, over to blue. Okay, setting up for game number two. University of Kentucky is going to send us over to uh, what I believe is the most popular map in all of Amateur Hots, Infernal Shrines. Let's use our Weenus tick to get that map picked. There that is. Everything looking good there. Get our lobby set up shortly. If you're just joining us, we are here at TESPA Heroes Preseason. This is week seven. Last of the regular season. Two teams in the top 25 looking... Uh, looking to pick up some more spots. Look at a jockey for position before the final. Seedings for our 64-team fall finale. Shout out to Dad of Time again. What a generous man you are. Will you be my hot dad? Team Strickland into the lobby now. We'll get everything set up quickly. Okay. There we go. All right. It is the afternoon. Things are getting a little dark outside here on the East Coast. Uh, game number two uh, will get started as soon as everybody shows up and is re uh, excuse me, already here. Once again, we're headed to Infernal Shrines for map number two. This is the best of three set, so Colorado School of Mines can finish this one off here uh, with a victory. 17-1 kill performance uh, in game number one. Uh, shout out to Time, certainly on the Maiev, but I, uh, a, a great performance from uh, Justice hopping onto the Tychus, who we've got to switch and get on the right side. Hey, there we go. Right. Uh, you know, I like both drafts. Uh, I don't think that Kentucky did anything wrong with their selections. I think they got, they got a lot of very good heroes. They just sort of got bum-rushed in the early game. Uh, Diablo naturally struggling against Tychus was really the problem, and uh, uh, that Maya play was pretty good. The resets for time uh, 
we're just on point. Okay. All right, Michaelin has signaled that Colorado School of Mines is ready. We're just waiting, and Zhu has called it for Kentucky. Okay. Let's see, do I have everything good? Yep, 1-0, maps looking good. Let's head to draft. Map number two will be Infernal. Crimes. Thank you guys for joining me on this Sunday afternoon. Hopefully you guys aren't too burned out by BlizzCon. Got a little bit of TESPA action to bring you through the withdrawal. Colorado Mines will have first pick yet again. Went for a little bit of a support choke. Remember, they went with a uh, cane band to start things off. We had Taronda removed as well. The other bands were Jaina and Malganis. I really don't expect to see Maya here again. Yes, the respect been given. Dr. Holiday with the subscription. What's happening? Darn it. I'm going to have to scrim you guys now. Doc Holiday playing with Papa Hollis in Heroes Lounge. We will certainly look to be catching uh, some of those games as they will be competing in the same division. I heed the voice of Elune. As my squad. Toronto first pick for Joe. Bumblebee, well, thank you. My support player's here. What's happening, fam? Twitch alerts going bananas. Dad of time with a subscription. Shout out. Much love, sir. You know me. I'm going to keep trying to follow uh, the Colorado boys in time wherever I can. Johanna and Junkrat picked up. So we got some long range poke here for Kentucky. And they liked the poke in the first game. They went with Hanzo and Rainer. We'll see what the Junkrat can do. A little bit more of a solid front with Johanna being picked up. With Garrosh banned out, that does leave us with Diablo still available. If not picked up here, I would expect that band to come through. We get a Kerrigan. And we get a Blaze. Kerrigan recently went through a set of nerfs, but was very prominent at BlizzCon. I don't think she had a great win rate. I haven't really seen the stats for the full tournament yet. Ha ha ha. You old Zul bad. Clever. Kerrigan, when she went through the rework, was actually viable as a main tank. They had to tune down uh, the shields. Crow. You want a co-caster? If you can find me, you can hop in, dude. Effect. Oh, wait. I'm in... Oh, no, I'm in game. No! Sorry, Crow. I'm on a three-minute delay uh, due to test for rules, so... I just missed you. White Man and Dahaka haven't picked up. We also did get a URL ban. The Globals here, White Man will be picked up. Bit of a different draft here from Kentucky. Reckoning will not be denied. This is a bit of a tiddly special. We got a T-Rail. Paired up with a Gul'dan. Jaina will round our draft off. I love seeing Tyrael. Tyrael is like a hero that uh, is part of the reason I started playing competitive pots because you just can't... You can't play Tyrael on the ladder. You're not, like, not allowed to. But you bring that sucker into competitive and the shields, the sanctification. All good things. I see KJ's here. 
What's happening, brother? All right. Gave numero dos. University of Kentucky and Colorado Mines. Mines with a dominant performance in game number one. Looking for a very similar style here in game two. They go with a melee flex, bringing out the Kerrigan. The kerrigan Tyrael combo is always fantastic. Tyrael lacking naturally in CC, and it gets picked up certainly by Kerry. I'll have to see what the Tyrande talent pick is. We get Junkrat and Jaina on the other side. A lot of magic damage. Curious to see if we get Calderai resistance. All right. I'm looking to power this one off quickly. Cholera, School of Mines, the Blasting Burrows, led by Michaelin on the Blaze. Time hanging out on the Kerrigan. Joe on his trusty Tyrande. Typically, he's going to be playing the Tyrael Justice on the Gul'dan, rounding us off. And on the flip side, the University of Kentucky, a square. And four triangles, again, starting ourselves off with a card lateral friend. Bruce Banner on the White Mane. Captain Zhou will be playing the Johanna Mortician on the Jaina Dark Shadow on Junkrat. And I, Make Memes, will be playing the Dehaka. Again, everything looking fairly standard. One for one on the Atlas. Blaze going in with an immediate jump. The bullshit. Dark Shadow got caught out. Had to use a mind to get on out of there. A little cross lane jet P from Michael in trying to set the tone early. Time looking to get the resets going. Does hit Jaina, who's followed by the Lunar Flare. There is at least two, if not three, hits on Echo Corruption. And Mortician in big trouble. In fact, Jaina will go ahead and pull back. No. We'll settle just for the. Uh, for the tap. Time anchoring. He's afraid of a Kerrigan. What do we get for Toronto level one? We did. We got Celestial Attunement. That's a talent that really helps Kerrigan stay in the thick of things. She can keep uh, building shield through uh, her assimilation shield. A trait. Decent amount of CC. You got Johanna. You've also got uh, Dahaka and the persistent slows from Jaina as well. Keeping an eye on Justice and hit stacks. Four stacks early. Sometimes with Gul'dan, if you are too far ahead, it's actually a detriment to your stacking. You just need to find these little opportunities to get some corruptions out there. Find some free stacks. When you do have the lane advantage, you tend not to see your opponents for long periods of time. Tiddles gets the interrupt. Time is starting to camp out already. The Lunar Flare. That's a lot of cooldowns here. Everybody's still level 3. There's Joe moving on in. The camp has been picked up. Blizzard is down. Kerrigan is up against the wall. Keep an eye on the jumps there from time. I think have shown up on the Dahaka. There's a root coming out. There's a big combo from Kerrigan. The follow-up is there with Lunar Flare. Joe up the front. Dark Shadow on the backside is pestering. Just as tiddly he went low. Mortician the lowest of anybody on that Jaina. Michaelin is in deep. Does finish her off. There's a drag onto Kerrigan. Trying to find a way to finish her off. Dark Shadow looks like he will trade out. A Kerrigan for Junkrat. That is a two for one. The camp was picked off. And there's a corruption for your travels, Dahak. 2 1 early on. Back to our lane. Michael and went in deep for that uh, Excuse me, that Jaina kill. And a very close escape as Tyrael and Gul'dan both got out. RNG has blessed us with a top shrine. Bruce Banner. Just dodging. Both the corruption as well as the litter player is okay. We got a top here. Shrine active in eh, five seconds. Call the will go ahead and use their advantage to play up on the macro. Carrying the very good camp clear in the bottom lane. Justice preps the lane. Okay, with the Dahaka Global, it looks like I Make Memes is going to go ahead and clear out that bottom camp before heading up. Already, Jaina getting good Blizzard value. That is an immediate 10 Menkees picked up. Dahaka is in the bot lane. Tyria will be the last member of Mines to show up. It's going to take a little while for either team to get to level 7. This is a, about a third of a level lead for Mines. Putting Kerrigan on to the point. Looking to get the resets on the other attacks going here. There immediately is Dahaka. What a great play. Meme shows up. 
One drag, one dead Tyrion. Now the burrow's up against a little bit of pressure here. Time's got a long way to go. We'll keep an eye on see if he can hop, skip the jump around. He is in deep, is in the middle of a blizzard too. Finds his way onto Junkrat. Corruption comes through. Really good hit from Justice there. Time is low, about 200 health at minimum. Junkrat in trouble. Michaelin has gone in deep. And that is going to cost the Firebat his life. Signs of life here for Kentucky in game number two. And a shout out to I Make Memes for making the plays happen on the Dahaka. Joe will back up. This is. What do we got? Mortar Punisher? Nope, Frozen Punisher. An icy John Cena will barrel down top lane. Time on the Kerrigan will go for the side soak and we'll keep an eye out on the XP lead as both teams will hit level seven at roughly the same time. And there is the jump. Jaina and Junkrat. Very good siege. Start. Work on the wall. The anti siege in the form of. Uh, you got Ghoul Dan. And Tyrande is okay. Wall gone. We'll flash our 7 tower. Johanna in mid. Carry in the Haka down in the bottom. Carry hits the combo on the dino. No harm done there. Mines may be a little too aggressive. They wanted that Junkrat kill bad. Michaelin went in deep. Was maybe, what, two auto attacks away from finishing Junkrat off? And Kerrigan certainly had a tough time as well. Keep an eye on that mine. Someone's going to have to jump over it. Mortician's in a bad spot with Kerrigan lurking in the bush. Dahaka about to burrow in. Keep an eye on the Kerrigan here. Onyx has been making plays. Saving the drag. Drag misses. Junkrat does not hit the mine. Kerrigan gets out and now has set sights on Jaina, who gets blown up. Junkrat is up next. Two quick kills. Kerrigan strikes again. This will be another camp invade here for the Burrows. If they start to march to level 10, they're up three quarters of a level. This will put them on pace for level 10 early. Level and a half away from 10. the shapey bulls. That camp is such a tough spot. Multiple choke points where Kerrigan can absolutely wreak havoc. Bob camp does get picked up. So six minutes in at level nine, that's about six to seven waves. And with the objective not already having started, uh, Kentucky should be able to to pick up 10 for the next objective phase. We see Johanna in bot lane looking to clear out the neutral. Kazra camp. There's a dodge by Dark Shadow. Great mine. He would have been insta jib Especially if Toronto could have hit on the Lunar Flare. Half level from 10. Johanna steps up. Jaina is in mid. We've got three lanes of soap for Kentucky. And the Burrows running it down in the bot lane. We got the stack. 16 stacks on Gul'dan. Jaina getting things going. Ooh, near miss on the mine. Good dodge by time. They're going hard. Tens have been picked up. There's the Welly. I've got a long way to go. We've got Junkrat and the Rip Tire going. Kerrigan before she can even get mails from started is dead. Now the target looks like it'll be Tyrael. I make memes of a fantastic play. Oh, that's going to be two more kills. Tyrael goes down. Taronda goes down. Dahaka. Showing up in the bush. Showing up in the choke point. Providing the CC for two more kills. And Kentucky is going to get a head start on the objective yet again. Mortician and Bush Banner will go ahead and make the aggressive move there for the camp uh, on the burrow side. A much better game, too. They're taking advantage of uh, a lot of aggression on the burrow side. There are 12 kills to zero. Excuse me, 12 Menkees to zero. 6-4 in terms of kills. Michaelin has a clear shot at whomever he wants. Has picked up both white main as well as Jaina in the Jet Propulsion. There's a combo from Kerrigan. Jaina is the lead. And next target might wind up being Junkrat here. He gets hit by yet another Jet Propulsion. Tyrael with a body block. A great play. And a mind follow-up. An even better one by Dark Shadow. who uses another mind to get out of there. Good body block by Tyrael. I've been very impressed with both of these teams. They've been using the choke points incredibly well and that one Jaina kill is going to spoil things for Kentucky they will have to seed an arcane punisher here in the mid lane 
Neither team has claimed a fort yet. Nine minutes in, we have dead even XP. That'll change soon. 6-5 kill lead for Kentucky. Junkrat's looking to proc this guy. In fact, he got caught. There's the mine. Cena trying to chase him down. Keep an eye on Kerrigan here. If you hug this gate too hard, it is going to be a bad time. This is a five-man push, running it down bottom. Flare comes through. Oh, there it is. Jaina has been the target all game. Jaina being a hero that mostly operates in that mid-range has been a target for Kerrigan. Without the advanced life block, cannot dodge the combo and the lunar flares from Joe have been fantastic. 13 talents are online. Another aggressive camp is like, It's a cool talent. Sort of justice instead of holy ground. This is a great pickup by Tittles. Uh, this is a, uh, an adaptation you almost always see holy ground. But changing this talent up with something. There we go. Sort of justice. Uh, allows you to play uh, more aggressively material. You, uh, as soon as you throw Eldruin out, you have the ability to sort of wormhole back in. Or back away, if you will. Allows you to cycle shields and really mitigate a lot of damage while creating some poke opportunities. Tyrael has gotten picked up by the trap. I make memes is here on the Dahaka. There's the mine. Ooh, Scarlet is just overlapping with Gul'dan's Horrify is a big moment. Dark Shadow now with the rip tire in as this camp is looking to get picked up. Hits four members. That's a lot of damage coming out. Why oh, make memes hits Toronto with an isolation that certainly was not intended for her, but he went ahead and threw it in the bush anyway. Now Maelstrom here for Kerrigan on the backside trying to see if she can find some counter kills. Junkrat sitting on his own mind looking to try to get out. Kerrigan goes down. Michaelin is there. Now we've got another situation where there is a lot of people <laughs> trying to funnel through a tight choke point. Michaelin gets dragged. It's the Haka play. I make dreams. Shout out to the Dahaka play. Kentucky now up 9-6 for kill. They're behind in structures because of the uh, run it down mid. They just need to be careful around the objective phase. Uh, where Kerrigan, uh, as soon as, you know, both teams five-man shows up, have just been targeting Jaina and very effectively at that. Justice steps up. There's another corruption. The damage is starting to stack up. He's up at 23. Jaina's getting much closer to the advanced ice block completion there. About 5k away from damage. That's perhaps an accidental concussion mine. Junkrat dodges the grass. Trying to get on out of here. Actually went for the rip tire. Tittle takes a little bit of trick damage. Cooldown's traded out. This one lonely Cosmo boy trying to get to that mid fort. Excuse me, and he is not allowed. Another top shrine. Yet to have any bottom shrine. Five members of the Blasting Burrows from Colorado School of Mines have shown up in top. It's just been very good global play in the laning phase by Kentucky. But perhaps not having seen a Kerrigan this good in a while, they're just getting caught here and there. In fact, the, the kill on Junkrat came through with uh, a mine, which I assume was meant to be a bit of a disengage. It actually launched probably the two worst people for Junkrat to hit forward in Blaze and Kerrigan. The Burrows with a 16 pickup. Well, prep top lane. Both teams hit 16 at the same time, in fact. Kentucky just a little ahead at XP. There's an I make meme. There's a jet propulsion out. Now the rip tire comes through. Bunker. Wow, big damage on the Tyrande. There on the backside, we see Maelstrom Kerrigan, but she immediately gets isolation. Kerrigan down. We see Sanctification, but she could not reach it. Kerrigan, as well as Gul'dan, gone. White Mane trying to evade the Tyrael damage. That is two kills for Kentucky. They're looking to pick up a third. Tittle squeezes away, and now the objective fight is back on. 25 seconds before Kerrigan and Gul'dan are back up. 
It's going to be a bit of a long way. As Kentucky puts Dahaka on the point. Let's peek over and see. Shoutouts in chat. Dad of time. Thank you, KJ. Good luck climbing that ladder. Junkrat picking up the side, so Blaze has matched. Ripper Air online. And now that is one bouncy Aussie Sapper. Mines will play the long game here. Blaze and bot lane will pick up a Khazra camp that without a gate there will threaten bottom fort. Joe looking to see if he could pick up anybody in the uh, in the bush is postured over this shaman camp. Punisher jump, Mortar Punisher. Probably everybody's uh, least favorite in terms of strength. He's down at half health. Going down, this looks like it'll be nothing more than a keep wall. Probably one more jump, and that'll do it. You know, four members of a square and four triangles looking to escape. Careful jump, right? Has to use a mine to get out. Toronto with a slow on the alley. What is that? Harsh Moonlight at 13? Followed up with Empower. It's a 7%. Oh, no. Joe's gonna have to find a way out. Scarlet Lady just has been popped. I'm making shows up. There's the Sanctification. Kerrigan now with the Maelstrom inside the Sanct. Now trying to find some kills. Jaina goes down. That's another Lunar Flare. Next up is Dahaka. And the chain begins. Junkrat with a Disengage. Fort has gone down. Colorado Mines will let him go. Instead, they will take their enemies. Shaman camp. 11-9 in terms of kills, just about even on XP. We talked about that Khazra camp in the bottom lane. Needs to work its way through one more wave before we can pick up bottom fort. We will have another mid lane objective. With 10 seconds before Jaina comes back, and a little bit longer for Dahaka. Keep in play here. Horrify available for a potential disengage. You see time chunking this keep down. Justice is looking to play safe. There goes the keep. Blessed Shield comes out from Johanna. Try to get the disengage going. Time is bouncing around. Scarlet Aegis has been popped. Careful, there's a mine there. There's an isolation. Carry didn't get to pick up yet again. Dahaka answering. His, his, excuse me, his Zerg Queen. Ah, rip tire. Looking for Joe. Two more kills, Blaze and Kerrigan. Keep an eye on Dark Shadow here with Ripper Air. You're a little bit faster than Mount Speed uh, with a Concussion Mind Jump, but not enough to catch up to Taronda and Gul'dan. 20 nearly here for the University of Kentucky. And now, with their keep in the top lane gone, they set their sights on their enemy. They've got a big wave. About 40% of the way there. With 20 seconds before Blaze comes back, they are going to set sights on that top shaman camp and pick that up. Echo Corruption has been finished. Big boost in Justice's damage. Just about all of our questing talents have been done with the exception of Lunar Blaze. And naturally, Junkrat, Chase for Explosion. That one uh, usually takes 22, 23 minutes before you can feasibly achieve that bonus. 5v5. Justice on the flank. Keep an eye on the Horrify. There's a Welly. I think that's a Winter Mew. That is. Whoa, the damage. Snowman doing some things. Gul'dan and Kerrigan under pressure. Both teams have 20. Anchor from Joe on the Johanna. Blaze in the bot lane. Now we'll disengage. The Blessed Shield available for Johanna. Riptire comes through. There's the Blessed Shield. The Riptire follow-up is going to hit at least three members. Gul'dan gets instant jib. Tyriel got hit with isolation. He's gone. 
Kerrigan now look, trying to find some way to trade. Maelstrom comes through. There's a counter kill. Michael and looking to pick up another one. White is under pressure on the backside. We do see Kerrigan chasing down Jaina. Taronda has gone down as both Johanna and Dahaka saw to her. Jaina dead. Time's got a long way to go. This is a 2v3. I make memes. Looking for Blaze. There's the trap. But now Kerrigan looking for some damage on the back side. There's a grasp combo onto Johanna. It's Johanna. She'll be alright. Now the Kadem comes through. Two members are stuck in. Michael and... Not looking like he's going to make it out. Bruce Banner on that white main has been under threat. Time just shield on shield on shield. Kerry is just outlasting everyone. No bunker available. Time is going to try to finish this. 23-23. Aegis available. I make memes that says ISO available. White main. No, the drag from memes. Blaze with the Jet Propulsion out. 30 to 27. Here comes Justice. Joe is very low. In fact, Johanna doesn't have any mana. Oh no. Memes goes down to the corruption. That might have done it. Jet Propulsion on the backside. Johanna got zoned out. Dark Shadow looking for a late rip tire, but it is not there in time. Speaking of time, Kerrigan wins the shrine. Good God. That was ostensibly a 1v3 from like 20 minkies all the way up to the end. And now, with some run it down mid, Colorado School of Mines looking to finish this video game off. They do have sanctification and sanctification on the core with Holy Arena upgrade at 20 will probably do it. There's the jump catching Johanna. Sanct has been used. Winter Mute is out as well. Everybody's standing in the Holy Arena. The bunker is going to overlap with the end of that cooldown. Time chasing Johanna down. Blink. Maelstrom. There's the Ice Block. 60% on the core. Jet Propulsion finishes Jane off. 50 on core, and that is going to do it. Cena and some Catapults will finish this video game off. What a great game. Ah, I tried to make the call. Just missed it. Fantastic fight back from Kentucky. Colorado Mines will claim it, but... Wow. Shout out to I Make Memes. Dude, that Dahaka was dirt in a gurt. Hit a couple of just huge isolations. Really slowed down the momentum from Kerrigan. And you can see just how even all these KDs are. The only hero that was more than plus one was Dahaka. You could also see, uh, this is a quick look at what Kerrigan can do. Take a look at Mortician on Jaina. Gets a lot of kills, gets a good amount of damage, but those seven deaths are largely because anytime you want to step up, uh, Cone of Cold is right in uh, Kerrigan's wheelhouse for a combo. And Kerrigan, with the two baseline charges on Ravage, can really dodge the Blizzard quite effectively. What a great game. Love to see it. Take a peek at some talents here. This is eh, kind of the new Kerrigan build, if you will. Two O Colorado Mines, the underdog, if you will. But these are two teams that are still going to be in the top twenty-five, I would imagine, um, for the season finale. <laughs> to give everybody a quick little recap once we queue up the game number two win there it is for the Burrows The two map pickups there by the University of Kentucky, the square and four triangles, both of those lead to uh, Burroughs wins, but you, I, I absolutely loved it, uh, what I saw in, in game two. Showed a lot of really good fight. It's really difficult to deal with time on melee flex heroes uh, in this spot. He's a fantastic player. He's a top open diff player. And he's uh, just a great difference maker.
Okay, gang. That is actually going to do it for Bobo. Uh, I only had time, wink, wink, for uh, one set for the Burrows. I usually try to catch two. Um, but again, next weekend, uh, Tespa is running the 64 uh, team tournament. Uh, it'll be a single limb. I've got that highlighted there. Um, I'm going to try to cast some of it. Uh, we were hoping to uh, cast some games in tandem with them. Uh, I am, as many of you know, part of a, a large caster group that's been doing a lot of great work in the offseason getting ready for Heroes Lounge. Listen, we're going to see if we can pick up those games. Uh, we certainly would love to work with the Tespa admins. They're really great people. Uh, and they run a really cool setup. Keep an eye out for both of these teams. They both certainly will qualify in the top half of the seedings. You never know, they might even meet considering how close they are uh, in the standings. Okay. That's going to do it for Bobes. Uh, before I leave, though, a full shout-outs to Dad of Time. Hot's Papa. Doing work. Who else we picked up? Thank you for the sub as well. Doc Holiday with the sub. Thank you. Uh, KG with the follow. Thank you. Bumble V, my support player. I'll see you later. I'll see you. Perhaps in Team League. I don't know. Thank you all for showing up today. Have yourselves a good afternoon. I've been your host, Professor Bobo. It has been my pleasure. Good luck and good night, fam.